Okay, this is the remaining questions from the 5.5, 5.6 notes that we went over last week in class, or this past week. Um, it says express in terms of x, y, z, or w. That means breaking all of the logs up. Since everything is times, this will break into three separate logs, each connected by addition. So that's one of our log properties, that multiplication inside turns into addition of the same base with each factor in the argument. For part D, we have some things on top and on bottom, and we have some power, so we'll have quite a few things to break up. Um, anything that is on the top will then be addition or a plus in front of the log. Anything that's on the bottom will end up being a negative in front of the log. So we can directly go to log base A y to the fifth plus log base a w squared minus log base a x to the fourth and another minus log base a z to the third. That gets each of the ones on top is a positive log, each one on the bottom is a negative log. We then would need to pull all of the powers to the front so that each argument is just a single variable. So this would be 5 log base A of Y plus 2 log base A of W minus 4 log base A of X minus 3 log base A of Z. And that would be my final answer for that one. Okay, for the second one, we're supposed to be putting the logs back together. So that's the directions for this set. Um, there's subtraction here, which means that since the bases are the same, we can combine it, but we make it division, and the top one always goes uh, with the first one that was listed. So that's x over 7y. For this one, you have a power out front, so we'll need to, <coughs> excuse me, we'll need to put that power back on top. So this would be log to the fourth of w to the one-third. We normally turn that back into a radical, so that would be log four of the cubed root of w. Okay, the others we have done in class, let's go down to solving equations. Um, if you're trying to solve an equation, you have two types. <coughs> Excuse me. Either you have logs on both sides or you have logs and something extra, which means you have to go to exponential. If you have logs on both sides, you want to try to get it to be a single log, so we need to put those powers back on. So this is log 2 x to the third equals log base 2 3 squared. Um, so that's log base 2 x to the third equals log base 2 of 9. Same log base on each side, so we can set the powers, or the arguments, sorry, equal to each other. To solve that, we would want to take a cubed root of 9. And you do not need a plus or minus because it's a cubed root, not a square root. And cubed roots are exactly whatever sign the number is, so it's going to be positive. Now, we do need to make sure that that's positive when we plug it back in, but cubed root of 9 is positive, and the only argument that had a variable in it was x. So is x greater than 0 if you plug in this? And the answer is yes. So this solution works just fine. Looking at part D, we have addition on this side over here. So we would want to put that together as multiplication, and we have a power that needs to be returned onto that one. So this is natural log of x times x plus 6, and this would be natural log of the square root of 9, since it's to the 1 half power. Um, square root of 9 is 3. On this side, we can go ahead and multiply, so this would be x squared plus 6x equals natural log of 3. Same base on each side, one log on each side, so we set these parts equal. Um, and then we would move the 3 over. We would see if it factors, but in this case it doesn't, so we would do quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus square root. <coughs> excuse me, b squared would be 36 minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. That is going to be a positive 12 inside, so this is negative 6 plus or minus. Um, 36 plus 12 is 48. 
and that's over 2. We can reduce this radical. That's negative 6 plus or minus. That's 16 times 3, so that's 4 on the square root of 3 over 2. And that actually reduces again by dividing both of them by 2. We get this as our possible solution. So I'm going to write them both because they're different. Negative 3 plus 2 on the square root of 3 and negative 3 minus 2 on the square root of 3. Now they may not both work. In fact, I already know the second one doesn't because everything there is negative. If you plug a negative in for x, x has to be greater than 0 and x plus 6 has to be greater than 0. You can't plug a negative in and have x be bigger than 0. What we need to double check is to see if 2 squared to 3, so 2 times the 3 under a square root is 3.4 and we are taking negative 3 away from that. So I'm getting an approximation for that. So this is 0.46. That was important because I really didn't know what this number was. 0 0.46. 0 0.46 is definitely greater than 0 and 0 0.46 plus 6 is greater than 0. So the only solution is the negative 3 plus 2 squared of 3. Now normally we would not give you something like this on a test because you had to resort to radicals and stuff like that, but it could happen in a um, situation. So for this next one, notice that there's not all logs. In fact, this guy right here messes the whole thing up. It's not inside of a log. When that happens, you have to move everything to one side that has a log, leave the constant on the other side. So this would be log of 57x. We're going to move this log over by subtracting it and that would then be equal to 2. Because the logs have the same base and there's subtraction between them, you can form a fraction with the first one being the top, the second argument being the bottom. And then you might want to write in that this is a base 10. So because there's not a log on the other side, you can't set them equal, you have to change it to exponential. So this would be 10 squared equals 57x over x minus 2. 10 squared is 100. I would then cross multiply. 100 times both of these would be 100x minus 200. 1 times 57 would be 57x. Subtract over the 100x. I get negative 200 equals negative 43x. Divide by negative 43. And I'm getting an approximation of 200. Well, I'm going to leave it as a fraction over 43 because it's negative over negative. And if you times that by 57, it would definitely be greater than 0. And this is definitely bigger than 2, so if you subtract 2 from it, it'll also still stay greater than 0. So as long as both arguments inside the log stay greater than 0, the solution is valid. And then for our last one right here on this part, um, I see again that this 1 is messing everything up, so I need to move the natural log of x plus 1 to the other side. Uh, they're both base E, so I can turn this back into a division problem. And sometimes it helps to write the base in. So this is then, again, I have to do the spiral technique. This would be E to the first equals X over X plus 1. Cross multiply, that would be E times X plus E times 1 equals X. Probably going to have to write below here. Um, and then we would get the x terms on one side and the e over here on the other side. Pull out an x and divide by this. Now a lot of people would say, I don't know if the solution works or not, but here's the thing. If this comes out negative, it's definitely not going to work in the solution because this x right here has to stay greater than 0 and so does the x plus 1. So remember, e is a number. So if I do, and we want to do it to the first power, so e to the first power needs to be negative on top. Where's my negative sign? There it is. Um, and then we're going to divide that by, in parentheses, another e, but this time minus 1. If you work that out, you get negative 1.58. So this guy is approximately negative 1.58, which means it doesn't work in that solution. It doesn't keep everything greater than zero. So this one would have no solution. Okay, so on these two right here, we're trying to find a two-decimal approximation for the answer. 
the X is in the exponent and you can't get it out because they're not the same base. So we take a log of both sides. And that's legal as long as you do it to both sides. We can then pull the X to the front as a power comes to the front as a coefficient. And then we would divide by the log 4. Now that would be the exact solution. So I'm only going to work this first one because the next one is exactly like it. And then we would approximate it. The reason I use just log is that's something my calculator can do. So I'm doing log base, let's see, 3 divided by log base 4. So 3, uh, let's see, where are my logs? There's log divided by 4 log it's 0.79 to two decimals. So this is approximately 0.79. So that's my approximation. Same thing for this one. It ends up being t equals um, log of 100 divided by log of one third. So you would use your calculator again to approximate that as well. Uh, for number five, you're putting these back together. It says use change, or excuse me, we're breaking them apart. For number six, we'll put it back together. If you have something that you don't you have a calculator button for, in other words, log base two is not on your calculator. Your calculator has log base 10 and natural log, which is log base E. So if you want to use your calculator to approximate a log, there's a rule that says you can change it to any log you want, one on top and one on bottom, so I'm using base 10 as long as the original argument is now the argument of the top and the original base is the argument of the bottom. So that is called the change of base formula. So log 20 divided by log 2 is 4.32. So this one you would do, and I, you could also do natural log. So what if I did natural log? It would be 1 half over natural log of 6, and I would use my calculator to approximate that. In this scenario, notice these two guys right here. Um, I don't know what 7 to what power equals 243 or 7 to what power equals 3, but they both have base 7, so you can actually backtrack this and call this log of base 3 and the argument 243. In other words, you did change of base backwards. You notice that these matched, so we could turn just the arguments into a log. And the reason that's helpful is because 3 to a power does equal 243. Let's see, is it 3 to the 7th or is that too big? That's too big. It might be 3 to the 5th. It is. So 3 to the 5th power equals 243. So this can actually be evaluated. Okay, um, since B is more like the one that's on the test, I'll do that one, and then there's just a few more equations left to work through. This one is like your bonus question on the exam coming up. Uh, you do not have to go as crazy as WebAssign makes you go with it. They make you put your answer into some long format at the end. We're going to just show you what you need to know for the test. So, because these bases could never match, we will take a log of both sides and use a log that your calculator can do. So do log base 10 or do log base E, which is natural log. The whole reason for doing this is because now these powers can come to the front based on the fact that these are both logs now. And as long as you did it to both sides, it's legal. So this would be 2 minus 3x log of 3 equals 2x plus 1 log of 4. Sometimes it helps if you write your logs like this, because I've noticed mine started looking like 1's. Um, so then this needs to be distributed. So this is 2 log of 3 minus 3x log of 3. This would be 2x log of 4, which I don't really need the parentheses. So log of 4 plus 1 times log would just be log of 4. Okay, notice that these two guys right here both have x's, the other ones don't. So we want to move these to the same side and move anything that doesn't have the x to the other side. So I'm going to leave 2 log 3 where it's at, 
I'm going to subtract the log 4 over to this left side, and I'm going to add that 3x, oops, I didn't write the rest of the 2x, 2x log 4 plus 3x log 3. Now we can pull the x out as a GCF on this side. Notice you can't combine any of these because none of them have the same um, base. Well, I mean, you could. You could write them as, you could put powers up and you can write them as division, but it's not, uh, you can't combine them like like terms. So this would be an x and this would be 2 log 4 uh, plus 3 log 3. And I would divide by this parentheses to get x by itself. So x equals 2 log 3 minus log 4 over 2 log 4 plus 3 log 3. Okay, now that is fine with me for the test. Here's what WebAssign does. They put all the powers back on, so any number in front becomes a power. So this would be 3 squared, so that's going to be log 9 minus log 4. And this would go back up on the 4, so that would be 4 squared, which would be log 16. And this would end up being on the 3, so that would be 3 cubed, so that would be log 27. And then they also notice that subtraction becomes division. So that would be 9 fourths on the top. And addition becomes multiplication, so that's 16 times 27. They would go ahead and work that out, so 16 times 27 is 432. So this is log of 9 fourths over log of 432. And then we get to this point where they say, okay, that is both base 10, so they use the same property I just did in problem a minute ago, and they say, oh, the bottom number is now our base, and the top number is now our argument. And they come up with this. So, like I said, this is a little bit overkill. I'm good right here. Okay, but this is what WebAssign kind of expects people to go through sometimes is to convert all the log powers back together and make a single log. And that would cover the bonus question for you. Um, this is just some more equations. So I notice there's a 2 here, so I can't drop logs, so I have to move all the logs to one side. And we can combine these by making it a division problem since there's subtraction between them. So that's 5x plus 1 over 2x minus 3. This is a base 10, so we have to convert this because there's not logs on both sides. So 10 squared equals 5x plus 1 over 2x minus 3. That's 100 over 1 equals 5x plus 1 over 2x minus 3. We cross multiply and get 200x minus 300 equals 5x plus 1. Subtract the 5x, you get 195x. Add the 300, you get 301. We divide. And we have to double check that both of those are going to be bigger than 0 for these guys. 5 times this is definitely going to make this really big, and adding 1 is going to keep it positive. 2 times 301 would be 602 divided by 195. Let's see what that would be. 602 divided by 195 is 3.09. So if we subtract 3 from that, we would be just a little bit positive, but we are positive. So this would be the correct solution. Now here's a nice one. These all have logs. So all we need to do is get a single log on each side and then we can drop the logs and set the arguments equal since they have the same base, both base 10. Um, so this would just be x minus 4 over 3x minus 10 equals 1 over x, and that's because we had logs on both sides. Cross multiply again. This would be x squared minus 4x equals 3x minus 10. Move everything to one side. That would make that minus 7x plus 10. That factors into minus 5 and minus 2, which gives me positive 5 and positive 2. We need to check both of those. 
x minus 4, so this is for positive 5, would x minus 4 be greater than 0? Yep. Would 3x minus 10 be greater than 0? That would be 15 minus 10, which would be 5. And would 1 over x be greater than 0? Because those are my three arguments. And 1 fifth is greater than 0. So positive 5 works. But 2 is going to fail the very first one. 2 minus 4 is negative. So this one fails, so that is not a solution. So the only solution for part D is positive 5. All right, the last problem in the entire set of notes for the whole semester was just an application of um, pretty much the formulas we've learned. So it says a drug is eliminated from the body through urine. Suppose that for a dose of 10 milligrams, the amount A of T remaining in the body T hours later is given by A of T equals 10, uh, parentheses 0.8 to the T, and that in order for the drug to be effective, at least 2 milligrams must be in the body. So determine when would there be 2 milligrams left in the body. So that would be our A of T. And we want to know how long that took. So 2 equals 10 times 0 0.8 to the T power. Divide the 10 over so that this base over here can be by itself. That would be 1 fifth equals 0 0.8 to the T. Because our exponent is a variable, we would need to use logs. You can use natural log or you can use log base 10, either one's fine. Sometimes I swap it up. We would need to pull that t then to the front as a coefficient. And then we can divide by the a natural log of 1 8, or sorry, not 1 8, 0 0.8 to get t by itself. Now we want to get an approximation for that. So 1 divided by 5 is the fraction on top, and we want to take natural log of that, divided by 0.8 natural log, and that is 7.2, so it would be about 7.2 hours, because time is measured in hours. <coughs> so they know that if they let you sit for eight hours after they gave you your first dose, the drug would no longer be effective, um, so we would have to give that dose around seven and a half hours, so actually a little bit before that, but probably right about seven hours, so that you would have the effectiveness continuing and you wouldn't feel um, hopefully pain or whatever it is they're trying to manage. And then the half-life. Now half-life means when is the drug at its halfway point. If you started out with 10 milligrams, which is what we did, halfway would be 5 milligrams. So this is the halfway point. So we plug that in for A of T. So in other words, we want to know when were we halfway through with the drug. So 5 equals 10, 0 0.8 T. If I divide the 10 over, I get a half. So this is essentially the same exact thing we just did, but instead of natural log of 1 fifth, we'll get natural log of 1 half divided by natural log of 0 0.8. So it's essentially the same problem, we just said half-life, which means half of the drug. So 0.5 natural log divided by 0.8 natural log is 3.1. So at approximately 3.1 hours, they had, uh, their body had metabolized or gotten rid of half of the drug. And that is it for the notes.